this demotion of the other subject to the status of an object presupposes that a hierarchy of some kind is at work mediating and structuring our experience of the world all the time. In this hierarchy, other subjects can appear, but only if they do so within a lower position within that hierarchy, which allows me to reserve the highest absolute position for my own self. Strangely though, this demotion of a human subject to the status of a perverse object is applied not only to the others whom I lack empathy for, but is even self-recursively applied back onto my own self, since I subconsciously treat past versions of my own self as objects. I relegate them to a lower status than the present self who I am now. This is the only one which I can understand to be really absolute because I've obviously progressed beyond the self that I used to be. This process of undermining which transforms my own past selves into objectified others located down in some lower level of this hierarchy unexpectedly gives us a working definition of time and is therefore not something which is only consciously adapted as a malicious act and only occasionally performed with full knowledge that I do so. Rather, this um, demotion of my past selves into objectifications is something of a transcendental condition for the flow of phenomenal experience itself to happen. Now, if we finally examine the third impossibility, which paradoxically defines the kind of thing which human subjectivity is, we find that, according to Lunet, this is the impossibility of reaching a final state. This impossibility of reaching a final state stems from the fact that this undermining, which I just described, in which a time flows through subconsciously transforming the form of one's present absolute subjectivity into a perverse objectified content, which has to be banished into the past and um, cast down into a lower level below the absolute position which I hold right now.